Happy Victory Monday, Seahawk fans. Welcome in to an overreaction Monday edition of Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. In just a few moments, we will scour the internet and I will respond to some of the best overreactions from the Seahawks win over the weekend. We will do all that and more in just one second. But I need you to sub for dubs. If you loved that Seahawks victory, and if for whatever reason you're not already subscribed to Seahawks today, you need to. Because we're doing watch parties for every game all season. Live shows every Wednesday as well. In addition to covering the news and rumors of your favorite team. It's all in one place right here on the channel. Hit that red sub button. We are closing in on 30,000 subscribers here on Seahawks today. I think we can get there this week. We're only 284 away. And when we reach that milestone, as promised... I will do a Gatorade bath here on Seahawks Today. You guys asked me to do it. I'm a man of my word. We will do it. But I want to know, when we get to 30,000, what color should the Gatorade bath be? Let me know in the comments section what color that should be when we reach 30,000 subscribers here on the channel. So beginning on Overreaction Monday, got to start with Tariq Wollin. And I was seeing a lot of people compare Tariq Wollin to Richard Sherman. Even Richard Sherman brought this up himself on his own Twitter feed. Richard Sherman, of course, one of the best cornerbacks of all time, now working for Amazon as one of their uh, lead analysts on their Thursday night football coverage. And what's interesting is the resemblance between these two is uncanny. Now, I think it's a little too early to anoint Wollin Richard Sherman, but nonetheless, look at these comparisons. Sherman converted from wide receiver to cornerback in college. He was the 154th overall pick in the NFL draft in 2011. As a rookie, he had four interceptions. Then you look at Tariq Woolen, same story. Converted from wide receiver to cornerback. He was the 153rd overall pick in the NFL draft this year in 2022. And already has four interceptions, the same total that Sherman had for his entire season as a rookie. Wollins looked great. I think it's early to put him in the same breath as Richard Sherman, but he is certainly on the right track. I wouldn't, I'm not going to call him the next Richard Sherman yet myself because that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody. I'm not just, I'm not going to put that on Wollin yet, but nonetheless, he has impressed. I think that he is making a great case to be the defensive rookie of the year. Everything's on the right track. He's been incredible. Is he the next Richard Sherman? What say you? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. You might get an ad break. If so, take advantage of it. And let me know if you think that Woolen is the next Richard Sherman. Why for yes, in for no. Number two on Overreaction Monday. Let's move on and talk about Cody Barton. And Cody Barton, look, has not played good this season. That's no secret. And he's been one of the biggest problems when you talk about this Seahawks defense as a whole. And the Seahawks defense played their best game of the year so far without question on Sunday. And I don't think it's any coincidence that they did so with Cody Barton in a limited role. Hear me out on this. Barton played in a season low 28 snaps in Sunday's win against Arizona. The Seahawks mostly ran Dime and nickel packages. So there wasn't a need to have Cody Barton out there. The Seahawks gave up just 44 yards on 18 carries to the Cardinals running backs. Okay? Murray, Kyler Murray, he fumbled the ball and kept the Cardinals uh, out of the end zone. They never got in there. Remember, the one touchdown score that the Arizona Cardinals had was their special teams unit. More on that later, by the way. And this scheme that we saw from Seattle was something similar to what Vic Fangio has done over the years, the former Denver Broncos head coach, and it worked. I think we're going to see more of it, where the Seahawks essentially take Cody Barton out of the equation here and go with more diamond nickel-based packages. This really seemed to work. Remember, this Arizona offense was supposed to be very explosive, and for the most part, Seattle shut them down. So, I'll say, as far as benching Cody Barton goes, I don't know if you're going to find another linebacker right now that's better than him in that spot. 
But what you will do, I think, is see a reduced role where they'll continue to go to more nickel and dime defenses where they don't need Cody Barton on the field where he'll see less and less snaps. So something to keep in mind there. Number three on the overreactions. Kenneth Walker better than Rashad Penny? Hmm. Well, Kenneth Walker has looked really good the last couple of weeks. Rashad Penny is out for the season, and Kenneth Walker has just been phenomenal these last couple of weeks. The numbers against Arizona yesterday, he had 21 carries for 97 yards and a touchdown score. The week prior against the New Orleans Saints, had eight carries for 88 yards and a touchdown. In total, the last two weeks, Kenneth Walker III has tallied up 28 carries for 185 yards and two touchdowns. Now, as far as being better than Rashad Penny goes, I wouldn't necessarily claim that. I like Rashad Penny a lot, but they're both good backs, okay? I mean, personally, I think the ceiling for Kenneth Walker III is much higher that when we look at their careers down the road that we're going to see that Kenneth Walker continued to get better and was was playing at a near all-pro level. With Rashad Penny, I think we've already seen his best, and I, I don't think that Kenneth Walker III, what we're going to see is worse than what Rashad Penny is uh, potentially. I think what when it's all said and done, Kenneth Walker is a more talented back. At the end of the day, he'll get there uh, as far as I'm concerned. But both very good running backs. Nothing, No knock on Penny, but watch out. We haven't even seen nothing yet when it comes to Kenneth Walker III. Get your votes in. If you had to pick which running back's better, assuming all things are equal, that both guys are healthy, is it Kenneth Walker or is it Rashad Penny right now? If it's Kenneth Walker, type KW for Kenneth Walker III. If it's Rashad Penny, type RP for Rashad Penny and let me know. Today's show is presented by BetUS, the exclusive sportsbook partner of Chat Sports. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet, use the promo code Seahawks125, you get a 125% deposit bonus. You put $100 down, you get $125 to spend for free. It's like buying a pizza and then getting another pizza and an extra slice for free. A great deal. You can bet on NFL games. College football, NBA, everything in between. You can bet on the MLB playoffs as well. Chatsports.com slash bet. Next over reaction. We don't talk about punters very often around here because as far as I'm concerned, kickers and punters aren't people. But nonetheless, Michael Dixon caught Michael Dixon? Maybe not yet, but I'll tell you this much. Here's the deal when it comes to Michael Dixon. He's had two straight games now where he's fumbled a punt, and it led to points by the defense. That's 13 points opponents have managed to score directly from Dixon fumbling. Look, Dixon has been one of the better punters in the NFL the last several years. He's had a fine career to this point. But here's the deal. I don't care if you're Ray Guy or if you're Michael Dixon or whoever you may be. If... You're fumbling punts like that. Eventually, you got to say goodbye. I mean, th- this is two strikes for Michael Dixon here, okay? I mean, this has got to stop. I mean, this can't happen here. You cannot be a liability as a special teams player here. I mean, you're not asking too much. Get the ball off. Punt it away, for goodness sakes, okay? I mean, Michael Dixon, very talented player, but just punt it. Don't fumble the ball. Don't be a liability and cost this team points. It's that simple, okay? I mean, I'm not asking too much here. So, with that said, Michael Dixon, very talented player, can be a good asset to this Seahawks team. But no more. Done. That's it. No more of these fumbles. Got to stop doing that as far as I'm concerned. Last one for you. The defense fixed. Mm, It was a lot better. And schematically, I liked what I saw from this team of doing the dime and nickel thing more often. All of that is good. In fact, in particular, that pass rush that we've been talking about the last few weeks that's had so many issues came to life. Seattle had eight sacks entering the season on Sunday. They had six alone yesterday against Arizona. Huge step in the right direction. I mean, and everybody was getting a sack. I mean, it was like Oprah. Here's a sack for you. You get a sack. You get a sack. 
Ryan Neal, Puna Ford, Quentin Jefferson, Shelby Harris, Jenna and Wosu, Daryl Taylor. The pass rush was awesome. Uh, let's slow down as far as everything being fixed. Step in the right direction for sure, but I need to see consistency. More of that going forward. What we saw Sunday, that needs to continue. I don't need any more of these 40-point performances. Continue to play like you did Sunday, and watch out. This team could do something. Defense, I wouldn't say is fixed, but that was a huge step in the right direction for this group. Now your turn here on Seahawks today. We have scoured the internet with the overreactions, and I've given my thoughts. What is your overreaction to the Seahawks win? Give me those hot takes. Get a little spicy in that comment section, if you would. Please, I won't hold it against you. Be honest with me. Go ahead and throw in those hot takes in the comment section. As always, you can follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and everything in between. Talking about your Seahawks each and every day at Toggler Jones Live. Love talking to you guys there, and I will see you next time right here on Seahawks Today. Have a great day.